Wow. Props, Rex. To do that with a hole in your brain is no joke. Oh, is she still in there? Cut him open, quickly. Hey, girl, yes! Hey, guys, it's your girl, Laisha, aka GeekXXChic, and we are back with another reaction to Invincible. We're now in season two, episode six, which is called it's not that simple. So in the last episode, we had the return of Mark. He finally left the bug planet and he had to take his little brother with him because unfortunately, he's going to be an anomaly on that planet and that he's going to outlive literally everybody, but he is also not gonna live necessarily as long as Mark. But anyways, either way, he was tasked with the responsibility of bringing his little brother back and taking care of him and also trying to figure out what his father was trying to tell him in their last messages together. And when he returns, it's quite the shock for Debbie, understandably, that Mark has a little brother and that now she kind of has indirectly become responsible for him because she does not want Mark to drop out of school because that was what he would have to do to take care of a toddler full time. But anyways, uh, they decide that that's the way they're gonna do it even though Cecil has offered to take the child off their hands, but I think as an audience and even Mark to some degree, recognize that if Cecil gets their hands on that child, they're never gonna see him again and they're definitely going to experiment on him. So for now, little the little guy is gonna be staying in Debbie's uh, care. Outside of that, we see that the Guardians of the Globe have been having a really hard time <laughs> since Mark went. Their missions have not been great. And uh, we see that they were sent off on a mission to space because the mess from season one that happened with the Martians is still happening and the Martian, uh, what would you call them, parasites? They're on their way to Earth because they need more people to overtake. And the Guardians with Mark and Adam Eve on in tow, not all of them, the majority of them, decide to go up there and see if they can stop it. And that goes badly very quickly. And now we left the episode with them looking like they're gonna be overwhelmed by those organisms. And then back on Earth, what was left of the Guardians went up against the reptile gangs people, like not even all of them, but it was pretty bad. And it looks like we have lost Duplicate. We also lost the girl who shrinks and it was down to just uh, of all things, Rex, he was still alive, but we see that the Lizard King actually had a gun to his head, but we did not see it go off. So we'll have to see if someone comes to rescue him or maybe he just leaves him alive, we're not sure, but he's lost a hand as well. So they took a heck of a beating. So that's kind of where things are at. All of that to say, we're ready to get into this episode now. Let's jump in, but just before I do, a reminder that if you'd like to be notified of when I upload this particular show or anything else you might be watching of mine, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, and please show love to this video if you're feeling it. I appreciate it very, very, very much. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. You got this, Rex. Hmm. Or not. So brave. I just realized his hair is coming out of his helmet. Damn. All right, well, bye, Rex. They really just made us wait a whole episode to see that. All right, well, bye, Rex. At least you went out on kind of a good note. That speech that you gave to Adam Eve was really lovely. Come on, Eve, get up. Um, Eve needs to take a nap. She literally worked so hard. We will grant you death instead. I mean, thanks, I guess. Mark, I'm gonna need you to pull out something crazy. I've already said this. I'm not as strong as Eve, but I can keep them away for a few minutes. Okay, don't you underestimate yourself, sir. Don't you underestimate yourself. And this is your mess, so you absolutely better hold out as long as possible. Know that. I'll do it. Oh. How dare you? Stop it. I'm stronger and faster than you, and you know it. I mean, he's not lying. Don't fail. Okay. It's like football. We're going for the touchdown now. He's doing his best, I think. Good job, Eve. You need to hold it together again, even though I know you're exhausted. I'm sorry. Come on, Mark. I don't know if you were ever a sports kid, but you better be now. You're stronger than them, Mark. Come on. We told you we were too powerful. Well, we gotta take them out. It is what it is. Ew. You okay? Probably never again. I would feel so violated. Can we get out of here quickly? Where am I? Don't worry I'll about it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> the 
It was literally the anime run. Ah! <laughs> wow, good job, Rex. Oh, God. Wow. Props, Rex. To do that with a hole in your brain is no joke. Thank you. All the way dead. Right? Audacity. Let him. Let him. He's really not. I'm fine. Totally good. Huh? Yeah, there's the bleeding profusely from like two places on your body now. You know me. I'm practically. Hey, well played. That was a good one. <laughs> that was well played. I mean, if he survives this, that's. Yeah, good night. Oh, is she still in there? Cut him open! Quickly! Hey, girl! Yes! Oh, thank God. I think she must have just shrunk down until he thought she was gone. Uh, look, we gotta go. But we what? cannot permit you to leave with the great betrayer. Okay, sure. We can stay. This is all you're doing. It really is. You must remain here for punishment. Only fair. What kind of punishment? Death. Yes. Of course. <laughs> he, a lot of people died. I think you should have left him, guys. Yes, he helped. All right, fine. I guess because he did help. He did save. He did save Adam. Eve. Fine, fine. Sorry. Great. So I guess this means we're at war with Mars. <laughs> Is that what we mean? That's what's happening right now? Uh, thanks. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I trained with the best. Right? I, good work. All right, thank you. Respect. You okay? You seem a little shook. I mean, that was his first real action in his real body. I changed myself. Fixed the problem. I can do the same for don't. you. Don't. But it just makes sense I to- I said don't. I'm sorry. I mean, that's kind of the way his mind works, right? Robot sees problems and he thinks he's got to fix them. Because a top secret government lab is the perfect place to raise a child. Right. No one expects you to raise this kid. Let us help. No. Mama. Oh, sweetie. Good your boy. Mom is far, far away. And your dad is a jerk. This isn't about Nolan or me. It's about Mark. It's about Mark. Yeah. His only brother, which makes him family to me, too. Debbie. Shut Debbie, up. Mm. I'm more than qualified to do this. Isn't that right? That's right. All right. Get lost, Cecil. It's nap time. For both of you, I think. You need a nap for like a good 10 years, Cecil. Uh-oh. I've seen you in the world. All right. Those two were in a thing. Look at all the duplicate bodies. Holy crap. He, she has a brother, right? That's in prison? Okay. He's still alive? Still working on it. Good job. Smart Good boy. Job, Oliver. Oh, she gave Oliver. him a name. Robra. Oh, he's talking now. You named him after Grandpa? Well, he needed an actual name. Sweet. Besides Nolan's alien baby. <laughs> Nab. You're a good woman, Debbie. It does. It takes a lot to embrace this situation and realize it's not the baby's fault. That this world is good. Even when it killed her over and over and over again. Facts. Kate never stopped believing that. I'm understanding a lot more about their dynamic. I'm glad it didn't rain. Kate hated the rain. Damn, he was like in love with her. Feel this way, Marcus. Because you loved her, man. Yeah, I'd say it's... All of them died as well. Not the same, but though. This... She is the only person who genuinely understood you. That's why that trauma bond is deep. How's your mom? <laughs> Sorry, you go. This no, is the hard no, thing about not go. spending time together. I missed you. I missed you too. I really thought college would be different. 
College is hard. Right. Very hard. And I have no one to talk to about it. I mean, sure, there's William, but he's more your friend than mine. Hmm. Valid. You know, sometimes I wish I never got powers. Understand. And I could just be with you and forget about everything else. Well, that wouldn't have been the case even if you didn't have powers, though. And if you didn't feel that way, we wouldn't be dating to begin with. So... Where does that leave what us? What do we do now? Hmm. Well, I we already know that Adam and Eve is supposed to be his end game, but it sucks. Mark, I like them back. together. Whoa, oh. Rick. How are you feeling? Hi, Mark. Like a robot. Um, he's doing great. Doctors gave him a clean bill of health. Donald says he can come back to upstate, right? As a, yeah. Here to help physical, physical bill of health. How are we up here? He went through intensive body reconstruction. That kind of trauma can... Can? Surface. Donald. Yeah, you all right, bro? Okay. okay. A little too many similarities there between Donald and Willie. When that bullet went through my head, I saw my life flash before my eyes. I think eye. that was the accurate response. Yeah. I was such a dick to Kate. Hmm. To Eve, too. To Let's hope that this self-reflection actually dated. lasts. We go around saving lives while ruining them at the same time. It's not ruining, oh, though. Jesus. All right, let's hear it. <laughs> He's like, this is kind of about me and the hole in my head, but let's talk about you. <laughs> Turns out Rex really likes home decorating magazines. I like it. We like a man with a nice home. He and Amber are... Wait, what does that mean? <laughs> ten best bedroom makeovers? Oh, well, yes, you got her attention now. Eve's been peeping on Mark since last season, so... Slide in there, sis, I guess. I'm April Housem, here for the nanny position. No, before we begin, you should know that Cecil sent me. <laughs> Please come in. I mean, you have to know, Cecil's not going to let anybody that's not approved by him work with this child. My philosophy on child rearing is simple. Encourage a child's natural curiosity for the world. Hi, speaking of natural curiosity. Here you go, buddy. There's only a Fair. handful of people in the world with my skill set. Probably true. Me job security and freedom from government oversight. You're the boss, not him. Hmm. Mama boss. <laughs> <laughs> Kid learns quickly. Very smart. I wanted to thank you personally for helping out with the whole secret business. Mm-hmm. What do you want? And to once again offer you a spot on the mm, Guardians. There we go. Dad, a few members, huh? But you know how to find me if you need my help again. And you know where to find that's me fair. when you change your mind. When? Amber? Uh, this is where it's going to get very awkward. I mean, hey, if this can all go smoothly, that's what I prefer. Amber's a cool chick, and I just hope that she's okay no matter what happens. I'm just sad. I like Mark and Amber together. I actually came to talk, but if you're busy, I can... What's on your mind? Well, Aren't always being the therapist to these superheroes. I see. Girl problems. <laughs> Girl trouble. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's all over your right. face. At your age, Mark, it really is check. that or something weird new and new that's happening with your body. So it, it feels like the universe is conspiring against us. Ugh, it doesn't matter if you're a superhero or an ordinary. Tell girl. him art. Relationships aren't things. Exactly. Mark puts himself on the line for people he doesn't even know, and that takes real guts to not care what anyone else thinks, you know? Never always does the right thing. Invincible. Whether it's a tsunami or some psycho with rocket launchers for arms, when bad things happen, Mark has to drop everything and go. Mm, that's the reality. But it makes me feel like a jerk. Because I'm doing exactly to her what my dad did to me and my mom. I mean, but this is, now you understand where he came from. I like how they're doing this parallel conversation. Make the times you are together count. Look at this, solutions. Like I'm taking him away from people who really need him. He needs you. I knew dating Mark would be difficult. I just didn't know it would be so lonely. I feel like, like I'm failing Amber. Not them being the same person. Why are you here talking to me when you should be talking to him? Thank you. And after everything he did, I didn't realize how much I missed him. He's your dad. You should miss him. Maybe that makes me a bad person or something. Or just normal. 
I love you or I'm sorry. It was read, read my, my books. books. <laughs> that was really him saying that he loves you, though. No one wrote more than just travel books. What? He, he did. He wrote sci-fi novels under a pen name when you were a kid. Uh -huh. None of them sold right, so he gave it up. Hate tribes on the planet wreck. I told Nolan they were great. Real excited. Did you read them at all? Yeah. That's what I thought. I never read them. You should read them, Mark. You should read them. Sigler's face is a scalpel. But it's like I'm watching someone else's nightmare. Hmm. Am I me again, William? What? I mean, you? you're a version of you. Sinclair, it's going to be all right. I promise. We'll get through this together. Hope you're prepared. That's going to be a lot. A lot of to unpack, bro. And it's going to get messy. The Infinity Ray. I want it. What does it do? It was said to emit an unstoppable energy wave that destroyed anything. Not the sharks. The space sharks. Let's see. I see. That man literally just obliterated many, too many things. If the infinity ray is indeed real and as powerful as the stories claim. It's a powerful weapon. Okay, this guy might exist. Nolan's saying that there might be a weapon out there that can hurt a Viltrumite. The planet was so dense and its pull so strong, we could barely move. But we did because we're Viltrumite. <laughs> I almost choked. Holy crap. And they can do damage to Viltrumites, like, instantly. But because of the gravity on this planet, Ragnars had evolved strength like no other. I guess that would make sense. Oh, no. Oh, God. He's telling you about what he did before he came to Earth. And that there are creatures out there stronger than Viltrumites. You, and a long overdue vacation... On the house. Ooh. No. Hey. I wasn't asking. Yeah. But. But I need you. I said I'm fine. That's really going to be believable when you're screaming it at somebody. Someone's coming in hot from deep space. Alan? How many men? No. Uh, no. Ways. No. It's not. Immortal. Please leave Alan alone, please. I think there's been a misunderstanding. <sighs> How can I hear you speak? Okay. One hey. of my powers. Hey, I am not here to fight. I'm just looking for Invincible. Invincible? Only man sets you! No. I'll hurt you, sir. Not oh, the eye. Not. You have no idea what that eye's been through. What the hell is going on? I don't know. I right? came here looking for you, and then suddenly this douchebag attacked me. Damn. You have those on Earth, right? Douchebags. Yes, we do. In spades. My thing only works between me and someone else, not between two other someone else's. It's a design flaw. I, I'm told there's an update. <laughs> Can we get the 5.0 right now? Did Alan attack you or threaten you? Oh, good question. Mark wants to know if I attacked you or mm. threatened you, which I totally didn't because you just charged up here and, and punched me, me in the face. Hmm. Take a breather, bro. I you need a vacation. Bye-bye. Take a nap now. Have a Snickers. He's got his a girlfriend lot just died. on his mind. Well, now I feel like a giant douchebag. <laughs> no, no one's a douchebag here. Send it. Send it. Send it. Amber, send it. Good now. You know, on my planet, sock on the door means some. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. <laughs> Ooh, he's like, do we know each other that well? Oh, Jesus. Well, it's okay. Oop, Who sorry. needs a bed? That makes two of you. It's not much, but it is a start. It now, is. If we could only win over your dad. Yeah, uh, about my dad. He's, uh, I'm not in a great place right now. That is quite the story. Do you think my dad's dead? I don't, personally, no, no, no. but we don't know. So, why are you here exactly? Want to oh, go on another yes, interspace right, trip and you just got back again? We got a boogie. No. What? No. I, I just got back from space. Twice. I'm not going back just to talk to your boss. This could be our chance to end Viltrumite tyranny for good. Isn't that what you want? Of course, but can I have a minute to actually breathe air? But Space Rider in the book, 
It's Space Racer in real life, and he is legendary. Wow, just a few a uh, few letters off, huh? And it's all stuff that can hurt Viltrumites. Exactly. That's why my dad wanted me to read his books. No one had a list. I need this scanner immediately. Someone needs to invent it now. Get on it, Apple. Thank you. And I'm very sorry about your father's impending or already completed. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. That's very sweet. Yeah, I, I still don't get why they took him away when they could have just killed him on Thrax. Exactly. Exactly. Tell Thetis that when it's time to attack, when you need someone for the actual fight, I'll be there. Period. Count on it. The way Mark still hasn't told anybody about the uh, little mission that the Viltrumites gave him yet, and I feel like Alan would be the person. For a Viltrumite to be executed, mm -hmm. he must be healed and whole, oh. worthy to stand and face the end of his life with honor. Really? There is a path to redemption. Mm -hmm. Rejoin your people. I, did I not say he was going to recruit them? You conquered hundreds of planets. Why are you up in my to the base, Empire. bro? You were one of our greatest warriors. Not exactly why you want me back. Actually, need. Answer me! Thanks for injuring me again, just delaying my death that a little longer. And its people are toxic if they could do this to you. They too pay. Uh oh. What did Earth have to do with it? We didn't do nothing, we were just chilling. I am Nolan, you're gonna have to figure something out, bro. You're gonna have to figure it out. <coughs> if he coughs off a sequid, ew, he's gonna cough off a sequid, isn't he? Oh my God, when will they learn to actually kill these things for real? It also is their fault because why did they even... Oh, there's more. An excellent fit, if I do say so myself. Why do you have multiple arms? May I ask, sir, what's the occasion for such a fine suit? <gasps> Finally! I'm visiting an old friend. Mr. Tony. Nothing to put over the head though, huh? Okay. Oh God, let's not stay in this place. I see what you did there, Robert Kirkman though. If you'd shown Rick Grimes, I would've lost it. Ah, uh, it is good to be home. <laughs> New York? Okay. All right, we finally have the return of our OG villain. Because it's been a minute. We haven't seen him since, like, what, episode three, I think? Something like that. But wow, okay, there was a lot to take in in this episode. Whew, quite a bit went down in this episode, but I think the main things to focus on are obviously... The Guardians, they did manage to get themselves out of that situation on the Martian ship. I actually had a lot of apprehension about them taking the Marsh, the, sorry, the astronaut home. Cause I'm like, he's been with them for God knows how long. Are we sure it's still him? Like there's just so much. But anyways, I understand why they had to do it, right? He didn't ask for this and he was a victim, but I'm like, mm, I feel like you should have stayed quarantined inside of their facility for a while, but. And how did they miss that? How did they miss not scanning that man to see that thing in his stomach? Because how long has it been there? Unless it was a baby. I gotta think maybe it was a baby. Like an egg that was gonna be laid in him and then it just grew because how do you miss a whole sequid inside of him, right? So I, that's gotta be what it is. And it's been days, right? It would not have sat there for days if it was, what he came to earth with. But anyway, that sucks. Anyhow, uh, they coming back to the mission, they did manage to get it together. Teamwork, uh, it was choppy, but it ended up happening. And I thought it was an interesting moment between Mark and the immortal when Mark was like, let me be the one to do this Hail Mary because I am stronger and faster than you. And we know that since the immortal took over the team, he's been quite arrogant and he's not completely wrong for it. Like out of the group, he has the most battle experience, but that doesn't mean he's the best person to do everything and that he always makes the right calls. And so I like that Mark stood up for himself and was like, no, actually, I'm going to do this and you just need to back me up. So that happened. And I think that was a good moment for him and Mark. Also, we know that the immortal feels some type of way about Mark because he thinks that him being half Viltrumite means he automatically is going to do what his father was planning to do. And this was kind of a moment for him to start to see that Mark really is not like Nolan and at this point has no reason to become like Nolan. So anyway, they do manage to get away at the last minute and they end up, um, the, the Martians <laughs> want to keep the traitor 
who caused this whole situation. And I'm sorry, like I said in the episode, I personally wouldn't have been that mad if they left him because, I mean, it is his fault. A lot of Martians died because of what happened. And Earth is now in danger because of his carelessness. And I mean, I know it was not by any malicious intent. It was definitely just a matter of him not thinking about how big of a ripple effect this can have. But all the same, I'm just saying, it is his fault. <laughs> right or wrong, it is his fault. But anyhow, we got back to Earth and we see that everyone finds out what happened to the other half of the team and that it was a pretty nasty battle. But we didn't actually lose all three. I thought we lost all three for a second there. We can just flip over to that. We see that Rex gets shot. Like, I was like, damn. So that's when I was kind of like, I feel like he's going to have to survive because it seems strange that they would hold off on showing that him get shot if they're going to leave him alive or sorry, going to take him out. But still, he survived a literal hole through his head, which isn't is totally possible. I have seen multiple stories of people who somehow survived getting shot in the head. It's not common, but it is possible. It's a very rare thing, but good for Rex, I suppose. As I said, if he did die, at least he died on a high note. He was trying to be nicer to the people around him. And as I said, he did say some really nice things that Kate needed to hear. And Pop, probably he's the only one who would have been able to talk to Kate like that. But anyhow, not Kate, sorry. Uh, I'm thinking of Duplicate dying, sorry. Eve, Adam Eve, sorry. But anyhow, he manages to survive and he's got enough vim left in him and uh, fury over being shot that he manages to take out the Lizard King himself as it was deserved. And uh, he did survive. So thankfully, and we find out that the shrinking girl also made it. She, I, like I said, my guess is that she just shrunk herself down again and stayed still so that this guy wouldn't attempt to continue. I mean, I don't think he would have been able to get to her anyways, because she was literally inside of him. So anyways, it looks like, thank goodness, she just figured out a way to stick it out until he died and she survived, which let's not even think about the trauma of her being stuck in that body for God knows how long, but she's very strong. So her and Rex survived. We did lose Duplicate though. I think they made that abundantly clear that we lost her, which is super sad. And we see that when the Guardians all return and they see what kind of what happened, because both of those missions did not go the way that they planned, but... It's really just sad to see that, you know, the ones on Earth had such a rough time. And Mark kind of sees that there's still something there with Eve and with Rex. And his look is very interesting because we see that even after the mission happened, because of course Mark had to take out a bunch of Martian ships so that they could bring their Martian friend back. But uh, yeah, they had their little hug. And as I said in the episode, I know that they're definitely, since season one, they've been building to the idea that Mark and Eve are going to be endgame and so be it. I just, I really like Mark and, and uh, you know this from season one, if you watch me, you know that I prefer Mark and Amber, but it is what it is. I don't have an issue with Eve. It's just not my favorite pairing. And I still don't think they necessarily are good for each other, but it is what it is. I will accept whatever they give me, but digressing. So that kind of happens. And uh, we see the immortal is not taking this death of duplicate very well. And it kind of fits in with this theme I think this episode have had of trauma and how people are dealing with trauma in different ways and just emotional stress I guess one could say and so yeah we find out that the immortal is not taking it well which we get we, we found out a couple episodes back that duplicate explained to Rex that the reason why she's with the immortal is not because of some zaddy you know dilf situation it's more that the two of them are very unique in that their abilities have them dying repeatedly and the experience of losing your life repeatedly is just something that none of us for the most part will ever experience, thank God. And it's not the kind of thing they can talk to about with other people where they'll really be able to empathize with them. I think for the immortal, this last death that he experienced by Om Omni-Man was really traumatizing for him. I think out of all the deaths he's had, I feel like that one really hit him super hard and he still hasn't dealt with that trauma. And then now he kind of found somebody to channel all that grief into and now she's gone as well. And it's kind of a reminder to him that there might be a day when there isn't a coming back for him. So I think there's just a lot going on there and a lot for him to unpack. And as uh, Cecil told him, he was like, yeah, bro, I think you need to talk to someone. I think you need to take a break and you need to possibly talk to someone and deal with this. But in the way that many people are uh, who are not quite ready to admit they need help, he's resistant and he's just turning to anger instead. And we'll kind of get to the culmination point of that when we talk about the end of the episode. But yeah, that was kind of one element of trauma there. And then we see that Mark and Amber finally reunite. And of course, Mark tells Amber about what happened with these missions and 
she is understandably upset for him and how hard this is for him. And I really like that they have that open communication as a couple, like that very much helps in this situation. However, we see that Mark and Amber are hitting a rough spot right now. Um, they realize that this is hard, that this relationship is now in, you know, really experiencing its first strain. And I think what's really important is when we see that really good uh, parallel conversation that Mark has with Art and Amber has with Eve, it's really great to see that, you know, Mark and Amber are very similar in very ways, which is very, sorry, they're very similar in many ways. And I think this is one of the reasons why they are so good for each other. It's, they both have that maturity and the same kind of values around like what to do with these powers and how to handle things. But they both also feel like this is not what they imagined. This is not the idea that they had of where their relationship was going to go or how it was going to be. And that's, just real, right? That's just a real situation. And I think what was really important though, is that both Eve and Art brought out to them that the superpowers are definitely a challenge, but that's not the issue here. Like even if Mark wasn't a superhero and didn't have superpowers, they would still have issues because you probably know in real life that there's not a lot of, a lot of couples who get together in high school who end up staying together through college. It's actually more rare than, um, it's rarer than not for that to happen because so much happens during that time of your life. Like you change and grow and shift so much. I'd say particularly from around the age of 18 to I'd say 30, to be honest, that it's really difficult to maintain a relationship, especially on a romantic level with anyone during that time. Like it's just a constant shifting sand during that time of your life. And I don't know that many people that have been able to sustain relationships during that entire time, unless you're both incredibly mature and able to be patient with each other. And also more importantly, continuously get to know each other and relearn each other as you keep making these shifts. And it's just a hard, it's a hard thing. Relationships are hard period. But during that very shifty time of our life, it's very, it's like an added level of difficulty. Yeah, it's just, it's rough. It's, it was going to be hard regardless, even if Mark didn't have superpowers, adjusting to college, adjusting to new friends, new situations, new pressures, and again, growing and changing and, and wanting to experience different things. There's no guarantee that they would have survived that anyways, right? So I think right now, of course, Mark's work is something that they can kind of blame it on, but it really is just a situation where They've hit their first difficult patch and they're just not sure how to navigate it. And what they do know is that they both love each other and they want to give each other the best, which is honestly the best place to come from. So we'll have to see if that's enough for them to at least keep trying. But like I said, I already know that they've dropped fat hints that Eve is definitely on Mark's radar and vice versa. So yeah, if, if Mark sees what he believes to be a better option for himself, then he's not going to want to put that much effort into him and Amber and so be it. I hope if it ends, all I hope is that Amber and him can end amicably and that my girl's good. I mean, I would hate to see her go because I'm not sure what point she'll have in the show if they break up, which sucks because it is what it is. Like she really doesn't have any connection to the show outside of her relationship with Mark. So I would, it would be sad to see her go is all I'm saying. But if she has to go, she has to go, I guess. But anyhow, that's kind of where they're at. They're trying to figure it out and what steps they need to take going forward in their relationship. And then outside of that, we had Mark kind of, uh, well, first of all, well, I don't know if you touch on Debbie. It looks like she's finally bonding with Oliver. He has a name now. And I like that. As I said in the episode, it takes a very strong woman to accept this situation. And not just woman, anybody who's in a situation where they might have to be in a caregiving position of someone else's child, especially in a uh, a situation where you've been hurt or um, cheated on by the person whose child it is. But I really like that Debbie is showing that maturity that even Mark has shown us as well, that she recognizes this has nothing to do with Oliver. He needs parenting, he needs love, and she can provide that. And like she said, it's Mark's brother, therefore it's family to her too. So I really like that she stood up to Cecil on that and doesn't want him to be taken. And as we all know, as I said at the beginning of the episode, experimented on in God knows how many ways if Cecil gets his hands on him. So it looks like Debbie did find a nanny for Oliver and Oliver's starting to talk now. So we'll see how fast he progresses, but at least that part of the life, their life is at least settled at the moment. And then we kind of had the last, oh, do I want to talk about? There's not much I have to talk about with William and, oh gosh, what's his name? The guy who came back. Again, that trauma theme, as I mentioned before, um, between him and also still with, um, glasses from the last episode. Why are all the names just flying out of my head? I am tired. But anyways, 
we know that he's not the same person anymore. And we see that poor William's just so excited to have him back. But it's obvious that this man is still, he might be physically fine, but mentally and emotionally, he's going to have a lot of work to do. William said he's going to be there for him. And I really hope that he can be, but I hope he's prepared for the fact that it's going to be a super hard road. But interestingly, both Mark and William are going to have their rough patches in their relationship coming up. So anyway, hopefully they can be a support for each other while that happens. But um, yeah, like I said, not much to say about that yet. And then finally, as I mentioned, we have Alan finally arriving at Earth, that situation between him and Immortal. And I think, again, that being the turning point for, Immor for Immortal to know that he needs to figure out his feelings and that there's something going on here that's deeper than anything else he's dealt with before. So he needs to go deal with that before he does something silly or hurts someone who doesn't deserve it the next time he goes off the handle. And outside of that, Alan and Mark catch up. And now Mark is aware of the fact that there is yet another Viltrumite that has managed to defect, but he needs help and he wants Mark to come all the way out to this to space again to come and talk to him. But I'm so glad Mark said, uh, no, <laughs> I've done two back-to-back -back space missions. I can't, I need to stay home and just actually like reacclimatize the earth for a minute before you shoot me back into space. But at least he's able to send a message back with Alan, which is that he found some of his dad's books, thanks to art. And he found out that Nolan has been compiling a list of basically planets and people and weapons that are capable of hurting Viltrumites. So this is obviously a goldmine of information. And I guess he must have been thinking for a while about what might have to happen if he had to turn against Viltrum, which is a great development for us to know about Nolan. Like... It helps frame a lot of stuff from last season and make it a little less visceral. But anyway, now Mark knows that this is something that might be helpful, but whether or not, I notice he's not said anything to Cecil about this yet. And as I said, he's told nobody about this mission he's been put on by Viltrum yet. And speaking of Viltrum, last area is the fact that Nolan is very much still alive. As uh, Mark said in the episode, if they're just going to execute him, they could have done that on Thraxa. They did not need to you know, pick him up, put him on a gurney and put him on a, on a ship. And I said this last season that I just, I think that the Viltrumites are spread thin and they cannot afford to lose one of their best soldiers if they don't have to. Like, it just, it makes no sense. And again, exactly. If all they wanted to do is execute a traitor, they could have done that right there and then, but they brought him back and it looked like they were giving him medical attention. So you don't do that to someone you plan to execute. So anyhow, we see that Nolan has been put in a prison, a floating prison in the middle of some place, and that they're telling him the reason he's there is because they need him to heal up for trial. But again, that just doesn't sound right to me. Like if you're going to take someone out, you don't need them to be healthy to do that. There's more to it. And as I was said, I was right. They're trying to get him to come back to the fold. And we see that Nolan's taking the strong, silent, stoic approach at the moment, but uh, it's not really going over well. The guy with the manacle, I can't think of his name right now. He is very much trying to bring Nolan back and he does not like the fact that a uh, mere earthling was able to disrupt him like this. And so he tried to get Nolan to answer him or acknowledge him or give him some type of sign that he's working or that his talk is getting through to him and Nolan gave him nothing, which was very satisfying actually. And he didn't kill Nolan still. And I don't think he plans to, he can't. And uh, he said though, that because earth was able to do this to their greatest warrior, it's a dangerous place and he wants it to pay. So this is now a problem because we saw Nolan actually react after he left. Cause that's not what Nolan wants. He'd prefer for the Viltrumites clearly to take it out on him. The last thing he wants is for them to show up on earth's doorstep and hurt Mark and hurt I mean, I'd say by extension, Debbie, I do think he still loves Debbie, but anyway, so that's where he's at. And so no one's going to have to do something. He's going to have to do it quick. If he doesn't wants to protect earth at this point, I think he can break out of this place if he really wants to. But at this point he has no reason to, because like I said, I think he was hoping the spotlight would stay on him instead of anything else, but that's not going to work out for much longer. It looks like so. Yeah, all of that, plus the fact that a Sequid got away is what we've got going on now. So we've got another, more more mayhem coming up for the rest of the season. I have no idea how we're going to end this or where we're going to go because they just keep adding more layers of crazy to this show, which is good. It keeps it unpredictable, which I personally enjoy. So yeah, another great episode, guys. I enjoyed it a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.